Hi everyone. So in this tutorial, we shall continue with 1D arrays. In the last tutorial, that is arrays part A, I have explained what are arrays, how we declare and initialize an array, and compile time and runtime initialization. So kindly go through that video before starting with this one. So the topic for today is that we will see how to insert and display elements with the help of a code. Also, we shall see some basic programs on array with based on your previous year papers. Next, we will see how to insert and display element with the help of compile time initialization. The compile time initialization I have already explained in the last video. That is first only we insert the values before we execute the code. So the syntax for compile time initialization was already explained in the last video that is arrays part A. So here we will see how we insert and display elements using compile time initialization with the help of a code. So every time whenever I explain you all the code, I'll explain with the help of an example. The explanation you can see here on this side. So let's see the code. Now first we write the header file that is hash include stdio.h. We know that a program will start from the main function. Now here we have an integer array. The name of the array is a. The maximum size of the array is 3. And we have initialized 3 values that is 10, 20 and 30 in this curly brackets which means what 10 will be placed at the 0th position 20 will be placed at the first position and 30 will be placed at the second position as I've already explained y'all in the last video array values start from 0 so as a result this 10 is placed at the 0th position and not at the first position fine now here we can see that there are 3 values inside the array so there are more than one value so in order to print more than one value we will use the concept of looping because the process has to be repeated again and again so we will use the concept of looping so we will use for loops here coming back to the code we have initialized another variable in tie so this variable will be used in loops then we have written a printf statement so whatever we write over here will get printed on the screen now for we initialize i variable we initialize i to 0 the reason we initialize it to 0 is because array values always start from 0 then it will check i less than 3 we have taken i less than 3 because we need to print 3 elements the number how many elements we have inserted here we have inserted 3 elements so we have taken i less than 3 i less than the number of elements when so it will check if i first it will initialize i value to 0 then it will check is 0 less than 3 the condition is satisfied so it will print a of i value so i've explained here on this side i value is 0 it will check is 0 less than 3 yes condition is satisfied so it will print a of i value i is 0 so it will print a of 0 value a of 0 value is 10 so it will print 10 then i value will get incremented i value will get incremented then again it will check is i less than 3 so i after incrementing i value is 1 so it will check is 1 less than 3 yes so it will print a of 1 value so over here we will see i value is 1 it will check 1 is less than 3 so it will print a of 1 value what is a of 1 value a of 1 value is 20 so it will print 20 then again i value will increment i value will become 2 so again it will check is 2 less than 3 yes condition is satisfied so it will print a of 2 value what is a of 2 value a of 2 value is 30 so it will print 30 then i value will increment again i value will become 3 so again it will check is 3 less than 3 the condition is not satisfied so the loop will terminate after this there is no statement so the program will terminate so this is how we insert values using compile time initialization okay and this is how we display the values display the values using a for loop fine so what will be the output of this code here we will get first there's a printf statement elements in the array are, so it will print elements in the array are, and then it will print the values that is 10 20 and 30 there is a comma here because after this percent d we have put a comma 
Next we will see how to insert and display elements using runtime initialization. Runtime initialization meaning user will enter the values when you are executing the code. When so first we write the header file, then the program will start from the main function. Now here first we have declared an integer array, name of the array is a, the size of the array is 50. Make sure you use a larger number because you don't know how many values user will enter when you are using runtime initialization. Then we have declared more two integer variables that is i and n. i will be used for loops and n is used to hold the size of the array. Next it will ask the user to enter the size of the array. Say suppose user enters n value as 3. Okay, so at this side I will explain this code with the help of an example. So suppose user enters n value as 3. That means what? It, user has to enter 3 values inside the array. So then it will ask the user to enter the elements in the array. Now since n value is 3 that is more than one element. So we will use the concept of for loops. That is we will use looping to enter elements inside the array. So over here we have used a for loop. Now we have initialized i value to 0 because array values start from 0 till i less than n. n will be the number of elements. So till i less than n it will execute this statement scanf statement meaning it will take the values from the user and store it inside the array. So we will see over here first i value is initialized to 0 it will check is 0 less than n. n value we have taken as 3. So is 0 less than 3? Yes. So suppose user enters 10, it will be stored in A of 0. Then I will be incremented to 1. Again it will check 1 less than 3? Yes. So if user enters 20, it will be stored in A of 1. Then I value will be incremented, I value will become 2. Again it will check is 2 less than 3? Yes. So if user enters 30, it will be stored in A of 2. Then again I value will increment. Now 3 is not less than 3, so the loop will terminate. When, so after this for loop, after this for loop, we can see the values are inserted into the array. So 10 will be stored at a of 0, 20 at a of 1 and 30 at a of 2. So after this for loop, we can see values are inserted in the array using runtime initialization. Now this part is used to print the elements inside the array. Now since there are three elements, again we will use a for loop because there are more than one elements inside the array. Fine. So i value will start from 0 till i less than n we will put a printf statement. So this for loop I have already explained you all in the last slide. So the loop will go on from i to zero, from i equal to 0, i equal to 0 because array value start from 0 till i less than n, n will be the number of element. It will print this uh, array value. So when i is 0 it will print 10, when it is 1 it will print 20, when 2 it will print 30. Fine. So the output of this program will be first you enter the size of the array say if user enters size as 3 then it will ask the user to enter the element inside the array say if user enters 10, 20, 30 then finally using this loop it will print the elements inside the array. So if we compare both these codes this code is using compile time initialization this is how we insert using compile time and we print using a for loop. And this code is using runtime. This is how we insert values at runtime, and this is how we print the values. So now we will see some simple programs on one dimensional arrays. First program is to write a program to accept n numbers and count number of positive numbers. So we can say a number is positive when it is greater than zero. So if you are using uh, say a array A, then we can use the formula as if A of i greater than zero then positive count equal to positive count plus 1. It means that if the array element is greater than 0, then we will increase the positive count by 1. So first, initially we will set this positive count to 0 because initially it should have some value. Instead of using this formula, we can even use this formula because positive count equal to positive count plus 1 is same as positive count plus plus. So we will see the code now. So first we write the header file, then the main function. So first we declare all the variables, that is we have declared an array A of size 50. We have declared a variable positive count, i for loop index, n will be the number of elements. We have initialized positive count to 0, is because when we use this formula, 
पॉजिटिव काउंट शुड हैव सम वैल्यू फॉर द द फर्स्ट इटरेशन सो फर्स्ट एंटर द नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स से सपोज एन वैल्यू यूजर एंटर्स एज थ्री दैट मीन्स यूजर वॉन्ट टू यूजर विल एंटर एन थ्री एलिमेंट्स नेक्स्ट यूजर विल एंटर वैल्यूज इन साइड दी अरे नाउ दिस पार्ट वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन हाउ वी एंटर वैल्यूज यूजिंग रन टाइम इनिशियलाइजेशन सो सपोज यूजर एंटर्स वैल्यूज एज टेन माइनस ट्वेंटी एंड थर्टी दैट इज टेन विल बी स्टोर्ड एट ए ऑफ जीरो माइनस ट्वेंटी एट ए ऑफ वन एंड थर्टी एट ए ऑफ टू नाउ दिस फॉल लूप वी विल चेक इफ द नंबर इज ग्रेटर दैन जीरो सो इट विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम आई वैल्यू विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम जीरो बिकॉज अरे वैल्यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम जीरो टिल आई लेस दैन एन एन इज द नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स so first initially i value will be zero it will check is zero less than three three because n value user is enter we have taken n value which user enters is three so it will check if a of zero is greater than zero what is a of zero a of zero is ten is ten greater than zero yes so it will increase the positive count so once it increases the positive count it will increment the i value so i value will become one again it will check if one is one less than three One is less than three, so it will execute this statement. Now it will check is a of i greater than zero. A of i value is a of one value that is minus twenty. Minus twenty is not greater than zero, so it won't execute the statement inside the if loop. It will directly increment the i value. Now i value will become two. Again it will check is two less than three. The condition is satisfied, so it will execute this if part. Now the inside the if part. it will check is a of i greater than 0 which means it will check is a of 2 greater than 0 so is 30 greater than 0 yes so it will again increase the positive count so positive count will become 2 and i value will become 3 now 3 is not less than 3 condition is not satisfied so it will stop after it terminates the for loop it will directly increase print the positive count next program is to count the number of negative elements we know the neg number is negative if it is less than 0 so it is similar to the previous one so we will just take a variable as negative count we will initialize to 0 the other part is the same that is first we enter the enter the number of elements then we enter the elements and over here we will use the formula as if a of i less than 0 that is if the number is negative it will increase the negative count so this loop will go on till i value is less than the number of elements and finally it will print the negative count so it is similar to the previous one next program is to display the even elements in a array and we know the number is even if it is divisible by 2 and we can see a number is divisible by 2 if when the number is divided by 2 the remainder is zero and to check for remainder we will use the mod operator so we can use this formula which means that If the array element, when divided by two, gives us the remainder as zero, we can say the number is even. So mod operator is used to check for the remainder, and we use double equal to to check for equal to in C. Single equal to will be used just for assignment. So if the number is divisible by two, we will print the array element. So we will just see the code. So first we declare all the variables then we enter the number of elements after that we will enter the elements inside the array using a for loop now this part is used to check if the number is even so this formula is used to check if the number is even that is if ai mod to equal equal to 0 we will print the array element so if the number is divisible by 2 or if the number is even we will print the array element so this will go on Uh, this will go on till i value is less than n so it will go on till the uh, for all the elements inside the array so please see that you all try out this code on your own now due to the time limit i could not finish many examples for more examples i will share my pdf file you can check the link in the description below thank you so much for watching next video is arrays part c